Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to this terrific seminar. Um, all of you here in, in the room that include both industry and a terrific showing from USFDA, we're really glad to have you. But I also want to acknowledge that we have 62 remote sites with over 200 other participants in this meeting. And I think that's a reflection of the importance of this topic and the importance of the approach that we're going to be taking here today. All of you are living with the amount of change that's happening in the health product sector in the U.S. and around the world. But this has been a unique partnership between the Combination Products Coalition, RAPS, U.S. FDA, and industry as we've gone through the evolution of combination products. And what's unique about this offering is that we come together as regulatory professionals from different perspectives to look at the needs, in, in this case the, the GMPs, and not only study regulations and guide, guidances, but to go through practical examples to see how things really work. Because we know in the regulatory world, regulations and guidances are there, but it's how things get interpreted, the application, the analysis, and the exchange that happens between regulators and industry as professional colleagues, but also assuming your roles. So this is going to be a unique program today, and RAPS is very, very pleased to host this. This is part of our commitment to the regulatory profession. And for those of you who are not familiar with RAPS, we are a professional society, not an industry association, and our members draw from regulatory agencies, including US FDA and regulators around the world, industry, academia, and other settings. And our role is to assure the identity, the evolution, continual engagement of the regulatory profession as we seek to put together a regulatory framework that drives really effective public health. And RAPS is trying to work with other organizations like CPC and regulators, um, with the WHO and other organizations around the world to make this possible. In our history of, of studying, working with, educating the regulatory profession, we really recognize that the best work takes place not when you memorize regulations or you just hear about them, but when you actually work with them. And when you work in partnership between industry and regulators trying to look at those gray areas. So today's program is a wonderful example of doing that. This is going to be a program where you, were, you will hear from US FDA, you will hear from industry, you will have an opportunity to work on cases, and we will be participating and engaging with our colleagues at the 62 remote sites that are here today. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to Joanne Wan, who's going to talk about some of the housekeeping, and then we'll have an opportunity to hear from Brad Thompson, representing the CPC, to talk about the agenda today. So welcome. I hope to see you during your breaks and later on today. We're very happy to host you. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Good morning, everyone. I'm Joanne. And right before we kick off, I just wanted to go over a couple things, um, just housekeeping. If you need to use the restroom, it's straight out from the main entrance by the elevators, and you just make a left, and it's on your left side. We have our Wi-Fi login and password on the board. Um, and then also, if you need any extra copies of the case studies or the update agenda, we have them up front at the front desk where you all picked up your badges. Um, and as Sherry mentioned, um, if everyone could be mindful of our webcast attendees and just remember to speak into the mic and during Q&A to state your name before answering questions or um, in some cases we may need to repeat the question just to make sure our virtual attendees are on board with us. Um, and for the breakout sessions, for the folks in, in person, we will help you to the breakout rooms. They are labeled going straight down the hall, but we will assist everyone to their breakout rooms. And for our webcast attendees, um, we will be breaking out virtually to collect your feedback and questions to discuss um, afterwards with, for the findings. However, um, if you would rather, um, feel free to meet and discuss with your colleagues that you're watching the webcast with. And I think that's it for housekeeping. And now I'd like to go ahead and introduce Brad, Bradley Thomas, and 
He is here representing the Combination Products Coalition. Thank you, Joanne. Um, so what I'd like to do is, uh, number one, start by, by thanking the FDA and our friends at RAPS for organizing this meeting. Um, this is really wonderful. We've done this a couple of times before, um, uh, notably, for example, when the uh, proposed rule came out for uh, uh, GMPs, combination product GMPs. And uh, at that time, we did it during the comment period. And I found it incredibly helpful as we prepared our comments to be able to ask questions. Because frankly, you know, we would have said some stupid stuff in the comments. But uh, fortunately, we had the chance to talk it through first and learn more about uh, what the rules were, were trying to accomplish. And we could, we could make our comments a lot more uh, useful. So um, I, have to, I have to specifically thank FDA for extending the comment period. Uh, when this opportunity came up, uh, we asked FDA if they would extend the comment period. It, it has been extended till April 29th, if I've got that right, um, so that you could uh, basically come to this meeting, hear uh, the FDA, uh, ask your questions, and then take it into account all that information as you're, as you're writing your comments on this uh, proposed guidance. So uh, I really appreciate that. I would also say that, uh, excuse me, that um, uh, FDA has really put in quite a bit of time in this. And, and to that point, they're going to have a total of 10 people here from the agency uh, across multiple centers and offices. Uh, and that's fantastic. Uh, it's, uh, it's really a way to get a good cross-functional discussion uh, of these rules. And, uh, and so we're excited about that. So my thanks. So let me talk just generally about the choreography for today, how we're going to do this. Um, the first part of this discussion this morning uh, is really just to get two different views, two different perspectives on what the uh, draft guidance says. We're going to hear from FDA, uh, specifically, uh, and I'll introduce him, Barr Weiner, in a second. Barr gets, let's see if I get this right, Barr gets an hour and a half, and then we get 30 minutes. Do I have that right for the two perspectives? Okay. <laughs> Barr's, a, Barr's a good negotiator. Um, now, in, in all seriousness, we know who you're here to listen to, and it's, it's not us. Um, so we're going to have those two perspectives, really, to, to kick off the discussion. Then the case studies, and we, we've done this before, and I really like the case study approach, because basically it allows us to explore, in a very concrete way, uh, some of the ambiguities. And that sounds like a, a, an oxymoron. Um, but really, by, by examining a specific case study, it's a way to talk a little less theoretically and a little bit more specifically uh, about the challenges of interpreting, uh, in, in this case, the, uh, the final rule on, uh, on combo product GMPs. And so um, you, everybody in this room is going to get a chance to do that twice. Um, basically, starting at 1130, we're going to have two 45-minute sessions. Um, and, and we have five locations to correspond to the five case studies. So what I would ask you to do when James uh, finishes his remarks at 1130 is um, go, to, go to one of your two favorites. And just, if you would, look around and see which ones are, are popular and which ones maybe have fewer people. And if you could, um, if, 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 you're, if one of your two choices is really crowded the first time, maybe save that for the second one. So we're trying to distribute the people, because we should have, we've got about 20-some people here, five case studies. There ought to be about four or five people for each case study. So if you would, look around and, and not, for the first one, crowd around uh, one, because you'll have two chances. So, so try and distribute yourselves if you don't mind. I, I don't want you to do one you're not interested in, but, but if you're ambivalent, uh, if you would go to one that has fewer people. So then what we're going to do is uh, reconvene, uh, and we'll get the time right, uh, reconvene at 1.15. And then we're going to march through the case studies to present um, the discussion. And each time, there's going to be three parts to it. There is a case study leader who has been pre-selected and will be in that room. That person will begin with 10 minutes of, of explanation of what the two groups, because by that time, he'll have gone through it twice what the two groups thought about the question and what the right answers are, and identifying any ambiguities uh, that they found. Second, then, th we've got this whole row. You can see uh, there's about 10 chairs. There'll be uh, roughly 10 folks from FDA. The folks from FDA will respond to the comments made by that um, case study leader, and that'll take about 10 minutes. 
then we're going to go to Joanne, who's going to get online and uh, moderate a discussion from people who are participating virtually and, and give them an opportunity to raise their questions or make their comments, whichever they prefer to do. So we're going to do that five times, right? So, so the case study leader, then FDA, then online, five times. And that basically is the afternoon with a little time uh, reserved at the very end for sort of general questions. Since we have, since we have this F, uh, FDA expert panel assembled here, we're going to give people at the very end a uh, chance to talk about maybe issues that didn't arise uh, during the course of the, of the day. So that's the plan. So for the folks who are participating virtually, we will go radio silent from 11.30 uh, this morning until uh, 1.15. While you guys are working, you also will be able to eat lunch, uh, but you'll be, it's a working lunch, so you'll take your food into your case study meetings and, and eat while, while we work. Um, so for those of you online, if you would try to make sure, if you have time, to read the case studies and if, if formulate any questions you might have, because you will get a chance to ask those questions uh, uh, through Joanne. So that's the plan for the day.